Thank you very much. Good evening, friends. At the outset, I thank Professor Muhammad Atik for having invited me to share a few of my thoughts on this very important topic, student diversity and inclusive education. I request all of you to listen to the lecture with total attention. And if you have any questions, kindly note down your, your notebook. There will be a question and session at the end of the lecture. Even during the lecture, you have immediate concerns, immediate queries. You can interrupt me and you can ask me also. Another request to all of you, kindly mute your mic. In every program, I may have uh, given lectures in more than 50 or 60 sessions across seven different universities in so many NEP programs so far organized. Almost in every session, there will be at least one person who does not mute the mic, therefore it causes disturbance. And I had to request that participant to mute the mic, to mute, but already the disturbance is caused. Therefore, I request you to mute your microphones unless you ask a question. And then, as reason to me, simultaneously, you reflect upon it, you think about it. You ponder over it. You try to relate to your own experience as a student, as a teacher. Then you will have your own perspective. The speaker is giving the, his perspective. But what is important is every one of all, you should have clarity and a very clear perspective on this particular subject based on your experience. Only then, there will be meaning for me to share my experience. With this brief introduction, I shall present in the form of a PowerPoint presentation. Sir, are you able to see my slides, full screen? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, sir. Fine, fine, fine. Yeah, this is the topic title, Student Diversity and Inclusive Education. Now, we are in the new paradigm of higher education, that is, the learner-centric paradigm, the student-centric paradigm takes, is learning outcomes based. It is activity based. Teacher plans the activities by involving the students. Teacher facilitates implementation of activities, guides, motivates, inspires the students during the learning process. It is a student-centric teaching and learning process. Student-centric education takes into account the need to know and develop the whole personality of the learner, enhance and facilitate learning, 
foster critical and sustainable thinking, promote experiential learning, emphasize learning through active participation, promote collaboration and teamwork, right? So you please go through these points and reflect upon for one minute. These are the six essential points the student-centric education takes into account. Please reflect upon these six points. You see, if you look at these points and also see the graduate attributes given by NBA and also UGC in the form of learner outcomes based curriculum framework, know and develop the whole personality of the learner. It's not giving a lecture and leave the hall. It is much more than that. Know and develop the whole personality of the learner. You have diverse learners in your classrooms. So you have to understand the learner, each one of them. Enhance and facilitate learning among all the diverse learners. Foster critical and sustainable thinking among all the learners. You may have large classes, like 60 in class. Promote experiential learning. Student diversity and inclusiveness. Students having different capabilities, belonging to different states, regions, religions, cultures, different social backgrounds, cultural backgrounds, differently abled students, and students with special needs studies together in the same program in the university or college. Inclusiveness is not only physical inclusion and giving some reservation to disadvantaged sectors, including differently abled students. It is much more than that. Greater autonomy in choosing courses, appropriate teaching methods and materials, tools and assessment methods, all programs in the university must improve the self-efficacy of the students. These students must gain confidence that they are at par with their peers, with naturally existing differences in potential and aptitudes. That is very important, sir. There are some red striking marks here. I do not know how... Uh, they are made. They are not a part of PPT. I really do not know how it occurred. You please forget about it. You see that they do not exist at all. Okay. And let us proceed further. I do not know how it happened. Then teachers have to address the needs of the diverse learners in all the three domains of learning. There are three domains of learning. One is cognitive domain related to mental process, thinking process, then effective domain, related to emotions, feelings, attitudes, and values, and interests, then psychomotor domain, related to physical skills, such as movement, coordination, manipulation, dexterity, that means skillful performance, speed, actions which demonstrate the fine motor skills, such as use of precision instruments or tools. So we have to address the needs of diverse learners in all the three domains of learning. It's not only in cognitive domain. Effective domain is very important, sir, which depends upon the teacher-student relationship. See, this is what is called COPE's learning cycle. 
Pope's learning cycle. It has four components. One is concrete experience. Based on the concrete experience, there will be reflection. Based on the reflection, that means thinking about the experience deeply, that is what is called reflection. Based on the reflection, there will be concept formation. And based on the concept formation, that concept the student will subject to the new context. That is what is called active experimentation. And based on the active experimentation, the students will have new experience, new concrete experience. And based on the new concrete experience, again, there will be reflection. Again, there will be conceptualization. So the cycle goes on. This is called Pope's learning cycle. So all the diverse learners must be provided appropriate opportunities to experience the above learning cycle. That is very, very important, sir. There may be blind students in your class. There may be deaf and dumb students in the class. There may be physically other kind of disabilities in your lab courses, but they should have opportunity to undergo the scope's learning cycle. Knowledge is unlimited. Learning is limit, unlimited. So the students and teachers together learn on a continuous basis. Learner-centered pedagogical practices. We shall see what are learner-centered pedagogical practices. Why focus teaching on the learner? Because we have diverse learners in the classrooms. So this is the cartoon representation. So I have shown here a tortoise, a hare, and a deer. So they represent the different diverse learners in your classroom. Some may be slow learners, some may be moderate learners, some may be fast learners, and they are unique learners. Their backgrounds are different, cultural backgrounds are different, social backgrounds are different. So it is only cartoon representation. I shall explain further on pedagogical basis. Their learning styles are different. When I say diverse learners, the most important point is their learning styles are different. Some of them learn easily with senses. Some of them are intuitive learners. Some of them are visual learners. If you show some visuals, they will be able to learn with greater clarity. Some of them can learn easily, even with your nice lecture. Some of them learn by doing some physical activities in lab courses, in field studies. They are called kinesthetic learners. Then some learn when you use inductive method. So when I say inductive method, it means we start with some generalizations, with some examples, with some what are called applications of a particular topic in the day-to-day -day life. We start with that. You give some examples. Students also give some, some more examples. You, give, you may give some examples of applications. Students may give some more examples. So in inductive method, students are given opportunity to actively participate. It's a dialogue, it's not monologue. You put one step in the derivation, there will be discussion. The second step will be suggested by the teachers. You are only a facilitator. Then based on the discussion, there will be generalizations. There will be definitions. There will be principles which will be stated by the students. So students enjoy because they are suggesting, they are participating actively. So in most of the courses I taught, I have used inductive method. There is another method called deductive method. In deductive method, directly you will explain any subject. There will be less interaction. 
especially in the abstract courses, sometimes you may have to state the theorem and then step by step, you may have to prove the theorem. So there may be little scope to give practical examples. There may be a little scope to give immediate practical applications. That method is called a deductive method. Both are important in your classrooms. In case there is a scope for giving examples and applications, you start with that. Then let the students make generalizations, right? So definitions, that is inductive method. You start directly a lecture. That is what is called deductive method. Then active and reflective. Some students answer your questions immediately. But some students take time. They think over. They take time. They are reflective learners. Most of us ask questions and ask immediately. Expect the answer immediately. That is a common error. We should not expect the answer immediately. Some students need time. We have to give time. And then we have to give opportunity to every learner, not only few students. A common error is we ask question, one or two students answer, then we are happy that the every class has understood. That is the wrong assumption. We have to give opportunity for as many students as possible in a week. Perhaps if there are 60 students, during four hours in a week, contact hours, you may cover all 60 students. Give opportunity. Give time to them to answer. Involve them in your discussion. The students expect that. Then students are attentive. When you are asking questions, everybody, so students are more attentive. That is very important, sir. Some students learn the subject sequentially. You explain any concept step by step. They will, exp they will understand easily. Some students are global learners. They will be able to link very easily different concepts, different topics, and even different disciplines of knowledge. You have to meet the needs of sequential learners and also global learners. The approaches to learning, pace of intellectual development are different, sir. The neural networks are different. They are not same. Therefore, you have to meet the needs of the learners from various backgrounds with various intellectual potential, different cultural and social backgrounds, you have to meet the needs of differently abled students. Please go through the article, Understanding Student Differences, Richard Felder and Rebecca Ben, General of Engineering Education, 2005. This article is available in the internet. Please go through the article. You will be enjoying. Initially, you will find it a bit difficult, but don't leave it. You go on studying spending hours and hours, then you will enjoy it. And at the time, you will have a very clear perspective. Then learn from the learner. You will be surprised here. What is this learn from the learner? Look at this. Instruction begins when you, the teacher, learn from the learner. Put yourself in his place so that you may understand what he learns and the way he understands it. This was quoted by Kierkegaard, a great thinker and philosopher during 19th century, more than 200 years ago. Please reflect upon this, sir. When I say reflect upon this, try to ponder, out, ponder over deeply Try to relate to your own experience as student 
and also as teacher. One minute, please reflect upon this. This is very, very important quotation. Once you understand its deeper meaning, then you will see the ways of meeting the student diversity and inclusive education. This is the key point. This is the beginning of your understanding the diverse learners. Please reflect upon this quotation, sir. Actually, when I started my career as lecturer in 1978, January, I was just thinking to whom I emulate, I emulate among my teachers. After one month, I realized it is not emulating my teachers. I must observe my students, how they are learning. I must understand diverse learners. Then accordingly, I reorient my teaching learning strategies. I go to class with more than one teaching strategy. Dynamically, if all the students are able to understand in one strategy, it is fine. Otherwise, I also explain using a different strategy. I always used to use more than one teaching learning strategy for teaching a particular topic so that all the students understand. How do I select? As I observe how my students are understanding, accordingly, I used to reorient sometimes in the class itself, then and there itself, with experience. Right. Now, there is another quotation by Swami Vivekananda. The true teacher is he who can immediately come down to the level of the learner, transfer his soul to the student's soul, sees him through his mind and understands him through his mind. Such teachers alone can teach and none else. You may believe in soul, you may not believe in soul. You need not believe in soul at all. Only consider the remaining points. In this quotation, other than that soul, consider the remaining passes. Immediately come down to the level of the learner. Sees him through his mind. Understands him through his mind. Such teachers alone can teach and none else. This also is a very, very relevant quotation. When you have to deal with the students or diverse learners and inclusive education. In order to facilitate learning outcomes among students, as per the intended course learning outcomes, teachers must equip themselves with the following, namely, mastery of subject knowledge. When I say mastery of subject knowledge, what I mean is, in terms of Bloom's taxonomy, at apply level, analyze level, evaluate level, and create level, at higher cognitive levels, at higher levels in psychomotor domain, students should be able to operate the instrument confidently. Collect the data confidently, interpret the data confidently. And also in effective domain, you should be able to relate with the students extremely well, a positive relationship in all the three domains of learning. 
So when I say mastery of learning, mastery of the subject, you should be able to solve any problem, any unknown problem. Not only in the prescribed textbook, you have to solve from other challenging problems also. Analyze case studies. If it is in humanities, you write critical analysis of a novel, of a drama, you write mentally. It's not that you read somebody's critical appreciations, critical analysis. You do it. Then only you will have the mastery of knowledge. With reference to social sciences also, you compare and contrast between capitalism and socialism and Marxism. You compare, you analyze all critically, critically. That is important. You analyze critically with reference to with reference to sociology, the contemporary issues. Let the students analyze critically the contemporary issues, social problems. Right. Therefore, when you say mastery of knowledge, you must have deep insight into the subject, not at remembering level. In order to have deep insight into the subject, you should read several books critically. Then, when you go to the class, make it more interactive. Your students will ask you challenging questions. Give opportunity. Nurture the culture of asking questions. In the process of answering these que those questions, you will have the mastery of knowledge. Mastery of knowledge is most important, sir, to be a successful teacher. Mastery of knowledge, not only in your discipline, in frontier areas, so that you can connect things. Right. You update knowledge. You always update knowledge. How is it possible, sir? That means a, a teacher should be a continuous learner. Only then you will have deep insight and you will be updating knowledge. You will be different, great people. Right. Then pedagogy, appropriate teaching methods. You should have knowledge of all the available teaching methods, not in the past. Don't think everything past is outdated as far as pedagogy is concerned. There are great educational psychologists like Piaget, Vygotsky, Brunner, John Dewey. They have profounded great educational philosophies and psychological approaches. They are still valid today. But you need not be totally biased about them. You can proceed further, further and further. Then integrating ICT, information and communication technology in teaching and learning. Some professors may have already taught you during this program on ICT. Different tools they may have taught and how to integrate ICT. That is important, sir. That is challenging appropriately. Inside the classroom, in teaching learning process and in evaluation, how to make use of ICT. That will make that will create excitement to the students in the classroom. That will connect the students to you in the classroom. So if you have equipped yourselves with all these three, then definitely you will be a great teacher. When you are a great teacher, the students are very much connected with you, sir. Generally, many teachers, my colleagues, used to blame many students. These students are not attentive in the class at all. But I have never experienced that. 
these some students are not attending the class all are attending in my classes Continuously, I am attentive in motivating them, in inspiring them, in bringing them to the classroom interaction, challenging them and getting challenged by them, nurturing the culture of questions, using appropriate pedagogy. So these three are very, very important, sir. You please undergo various training programs. And then, by observing your students, you can have very good pedagogical approaches. You can discover pedagogical approaches. You can be very creative and spontaneous in your classroom teaching. That is also important. There is a great role of creativity in classroom teaching. For example, this topic I have discussed yeah, on several occasions. But every time I discuss totally in a different way, spontaneously, I give different examples. Even my style also is different. Oh, otherwise it will be monotonous to me, right? Only because I make it different for different uh, target group, for different audience, I enjoy even this, the take same topic again and again. Learner-centered pedagogical practices must emphasize active learning. Therefore, we must understand what is exactly active learning. Active learning definition, any instruction method that engages in the learning process, that is important. Today, as Professor Muhammad Dathik said, engaging student engagement inside the classroom and outside the classroom has become a very challenging one for every teacher. Even to attract the students to the classrooms has become a challenge to many private colleges. And also, of course, a few government colleges. In short, active learning requires students to do meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. To do meaningful learning activities, meaningful learning activities, not some activity. You have course learning outcomes. In order to achieve those course learning outcomes, you have to plan meaningful learning activities. You have to plan as teacher. And then students carry out those meaningful learning activities and think about what they are doing. Only through thinking, there will be conceptualization, concept formation. So this is, I have taken this definition from this reference, which I considered the most useful definition. Dear friends, listening is very important. Listening to your lecture is very important, sir. Right. But by listening, students are not totally active. Listening span over best your lecture may be is only 10 to 11 seconds. Again, the, they go back to their own beautiful worlds and they come back, go back, come back. Right. Therefore, listening is important, but it is not as active as learning strategy. Taking notes is important. Students of your lecture, students must take notes. That is important. But that is also not considered as active learning strategy. Only when students involve themselves in some activity, like problem solving, analyzing case study, group discussion, etc., only then we consider that they are involved in active learning strategy. That is the understanding. 
have you do you have clarity on it, sir? Once again, I reiterate, reasoning is very important. Hypnosis is very important. But more important is they must do activities inside the classroom and also outside the classroom in the form of home assignments. This is the quotation by John Holt, a great educational psychologist. Learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of activity of learners. Yes, there was some problem, technical problem. I am back again. Am I audible, sir? Now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Fine. Yes, sir. Fine. Fine. Yes. There was some technical issue. I have again joined back. Learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of the activity of learners. Kindly reflect upon this. What it means to you. If you want to share your, your reflections, you are welcome. You can unmute yourself and share your reflections on this quotation. What, what do you understand by this? It is interesting. Learning is not the product of teaching. Learning is the product of activity of learners. John Holt, great education cycle. Will anybody like to reflect? You can feel free, sir. Okay. It means, don't think that learning is not important at all. Teaching is not important at all. Teaching is important. We have to teach. By our teaching, students understand only to some extent. There may be some concept formation. To some extent. But only when they solve a problem, only when they analyze a case study, only when they write a critical analysis of a character in, a, in language, only when they compare different ideologies in political science, only they analyze a case study in social sciences or management, they will understand better. They will have relatively deeper insight. In that sense, you have to understand learning is the product of activity of learners. This is the learning pyramid. You please reflect upon it. Sir. This is the method, lecture, reading, audiovisual, demonstration, 
discussion group practice by doing teach others me these are the methods the on this side it is mentioned average retention rate only lecture method you use average retention rate is 5% you ask them to read a book average retention rate is 10% you make use of the audio visual aids average retention rate is 20% you use a demonstration of an experiment or a working model the average retention rate increases to 30% then discussion group discussion the retention rate further increases to 50% practice by doing it is 75% teach others that means student seminars or immediate use of learning then it is 90% right so you please reflect upon it relate to your own experience we do not mean that lecturing is not necessary because it retention rate is 5% lecturing is essential but along with the lecturing we must use audio visuals or demonstration one of the two one of the two to motivate the students to connect the students to your subject and then you may have to use group discussion or practice by doing one of the two that means the activity by the students inside the classroom only sir if there are there is 60 minutes time 40 minutes is yours and 20 minutes students will be doing some activity inside the classroom that is how you have to reduce the syllabus sir teach others i suggest student seminars in every classroom i suggest student seminars in every course right? and also in a semester one credit you allot for student seminar separately they have to select an unknown topic and then give a seminar right then the retention rate is 90% please reflect upon this sir for one minute if you have any questions you are welcome immediately i will answer please reflect upon this sir slide ek hi dikh rahi kab se pardon pardon so the slide is not changing actually front title uh, title slide is there since uh, a longer time slides are not changing oh then i shall again go back you should have sir i think you should uh, click on the slide show slide show yeah, button yeah 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 at the yeah. bottom yeah thank you sir yeah is it changing now no sir no sir no that's to one second is it changing now yes sir ah yes i shall put it in this mode suddenly yes, something sir, yes. must have happened suddenly something must have happened. 
not an issue sir it is yeah. fine yeah. it Thank is you. fine now now you please reflect upon it please reflect upon this Any questions are welcome. Lecturing is important. Without lecturing, nothing, nothing, we cannot proceed further. But along with the lecturing, you may use audiovisual or demonstration of an experiment or working model, one of the two, to motivate them, to connect them to your subject. Then after concept, explanation of concept is over, they, then you can organize group discussion or practice by doing activity. I'll explain in detail later. First of all, please try to understand this learning pyramid. And later we give home assignment for practice. So unless there is practice, the retention rate will not be further and further increased. Ultimately, we expect to reach a retention rate of 75%. Classroom interaction, classroom activity, and then home, si home assignment practice put together. Now, is the slide changed, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes. yes. Now, yeah. now, some of the active learning strategies. These are the active learning strategies. Learning by doing. Learning through discussion among the peer group. Learning through case studies. Through group projects. Through field studies. Process problem-oriented guided inquiry learning. Which is also... Acronym is Poggle. Experiential learning, then reflective learning, then one minute paper during the classroom interaction. I'll explain what is this one minute paper during the classroom interaction. When you start instruction, you can inform the students that if they have any doubts, they have any questions, they can note down on a piece of paper, as I informed you at the beginning of my lecture. They can note down on a piece of paper. After 15 or 20 minutes, the class representative can collect all the papers and give to the teacher. Then the common concerns, common questions can be explained by the teacher by a different method. You have used one teaching method, but the students could not follow. What does it mean? What is the use of repeating this by the same method? You use a different teaching method, right? So that is what is called one minute paper, which is the, in, published in the literature, but it need not be one minute. It may take two minutes or three minutes. It doesn't matter, depending upon the number of questions. Open-ended questions by teacher, open-ended questions from students, collecting questions in a question bowl taken around the class by the teacher or one of the students. Questions, please, questions, please, questions, please, like that. Nurturing the culture of questions, very important. Preparation of question bank by students at various cognitive level. For one unit, I used to ask, you bring one question at higher cognitive level, apply level, analyze level, evaluate level. You bring one question. Each student, one different question, no copying. I will not expect accept the same question from different students. Different question. 
So in the process of preparing a question, the students will have a deep understanding of the subject. Important note here, very important note, sir. Please, I draw your kind attention, all of you. We have to reorient our teaching strategies based on the discipline, based on the course, and update ourselves dynamically as the generations of the students change. Please don't think whatever strategies worked out best to the last batch of the students need not work out for this batch of students. The batch of students are different. Right. So after five or six batches, you may have to discover new strategies because a different generation of students altogether are in your classrooms. In this context, I have a very good quotation. I collected this. I could get this only two days ago. So immediately I incorporated in my lecture. OK. So I update myself on a continuous basis. Please see the quotation. This is by John Yui, a great educational psychologist, well known for the strategy learning by doing, learning through experience, a great educational psychologist. He says, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's students, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday's students, we rob them of their tomorrow. We rob them of their tomorrow. That is a great quotation by John Dewey. Please reflect upon it. So you can watch this YouTube channel name. Professor B.V. Aparov is the channel name. These are the recommended videos. Learning Outcomes Based Active Learning Strategies Part 1, Part 2, Socratic Method of Teaching and Learning. Teacher-student relationship. These are the videos available. I have got good feedback from the participants. So these are the recommended videos. So I have mentioned here, Socratic method of teaching and learning, right? It is only questions. He used to give a few questions to his disciples. They come out with answers after reflecting over after thinking over very deeply, after discussing among themselves, they will come out with answers after some time. Then Socrates does not say whether they are correct or wrong. Based on the answers, he used to give some more questions. Then the students come out with answers. Then he gives some more questions. Students come out with answers. He gives some more questions. That is the Socratic method. Today, that the same method is called inquiry approach used in all disciplines of knowledge. Learning by doing, use of free and open source software. We have spoken tutorials of IIT Bombay. The website is given here. For example, C++, R programming, and several other online courses are offered by IIT Bombay through this. You can have details in this website, www.spoken-tutorial.org. They organize the courses through their own platform, IIT Bombay X. 
and they also use Moodle learning management system for conducting quizzes and all those things. I myself have undergone a 12 week FDP after my retirement at the age of 65. I have undergone this course. I, it was greatly benefited to me, of greatly benefit to me. I used to submit the assignments up to work on them up to 11 o'clock, 11.30 in the night because they give less time and more assignments. It's a wonderful program. The title of that program I attended was Online and Blended Learning. Then for 3D modeling, FreeCAD is the most important free and open source alternative in place of commercial alternatives. It is used by MIT, University of Alaska, Virginia Tech, Harvard University, California University of Technology, etc. Octave is the Linux community solution for MATLAB. MATLAB is very expensive. All the colleges cannot purchase MATLAB. So it is more than 10 lakh rupees. Scilab is another alternative for MATLAB. It is very strongly educated by IIT Bombay and other institutions. Primat provides environment similar to MATLAB for data processing and analysis. For big data processing tools, you have free and open source soft softwares. They are tools, they are Apache Storm, Apache Hadoop, Apache Samoa. Open source artificial technologies in machine learning. It is TensorFlow 2015 is an open source machine learning framework, easy to use and deploy across a variety of platforms created by Google for supporting its research and production objectives. TensorFlow is now widely used by several companies, including Dropbox, eBay, Intel, Twitter, and Uber. Free and open source softwares to teach VLSI design course. Based on the typical VLSI design workflow, a good VLSI CAD tool must support the following basic features, logic design, circuit schematic design, layout generation, and design. The examples are electric, magic, alliance. So these are the videos, recommended videos on open educational resources and creative commons licensing part one and part two and open educational resources in India. Then case study as an active learning strategy, which can be used in all the disciplines of knowledge, not only sciences and engineering, social sciences, management, pharmacy, humanities, in all disciplines of knowledge, case study can be used as an active learning strategy. I used to teach corrosion science as an open elective. So all the eight branches of engineering students used to register for that open elective course. After explaining the principles of corrosion, the concepts of corrosion, I facilitate analysis of these case studies by the students. I'll be guiding them in the classroom. It's not that I analyze. If I analyze, it is not active learning by the students. I make them analyze because I have already taught them principles and concepts. So I present the case study. I am facilitator. I make them analyze the case studies, the diverse learners, even the slow learners. Sometimes I make them analyze the case studies in terms of groups. The group formation is like this, one slow learner, one moderate learner, and one fast learner. I don't brand them. You have to cleverly do that. We should not brand any student that he is a slow learner or moderate learner or fast learner. It will do great injustice to them. Without branding them, cleverly I used to make the groups so that in the group analysis, every student is benefited. For example, by discussing the topic corrosion, 
I used to discuss present before them. Hope all gas has a day. Visakhapatnam oil refinery pipeline explosion. Petroleum pipeline catching fire in East Godavari district of Andhra Pradesh. Corrosion problems in swimming pool. Corrosion problems in bridges, ships, building structures in the form of real-time photographs. I used to search the real-time photographs, how they happened. And then I present before them, ask them to analyze. There will be a lot of discussion, different approaches, different solutions. Right? Why that occurred at all? So based on the principles, they very it will be very interesting. Each student will have his own, his or her own approach to diagnose the problem, his or her own approach to present the solution. Then I give them unknown case studies, which I collected from open educational resources as a home assignment. Right. Then also, when I give the, the different case studies for home assignment, I also get different answers. So case study is one very important thing. It is a open-ended uh, question. Very interesting. Teaching and learning of geotechnical engineering can be made more interesting with the use of field visits to construction projects and case studies. So this is the geotechnical investigation site. They can do a lot of experiments. It is real time. You collect the soil sample, ask them to expert, do experiments in the laboratory. That is one aspect. But once in a semester, at least once in a semester, you take them to the field site. Then ask them to do all the possible investigations. All the possible investigations. Right. Then ask them to submit a report. If necessary, if, you have, if it is in a large class, make them groups. Again, make them groups. One slow learner, one moderate learner, one fast learner. Differently abled students, distribute them among the groups. Don't segregate them. Don't segregate. Segregation is not in, is opposite to inclusiveness. Inclusiveness means all together. Case study of failure of Pile Foundation. The failure could be said due to improper or bad Geotechnical engineering practices. The Pile Foundation was supporting multi story building in Shanghai, in China. The failure occurred due to excavated soft clay soil on one side being piled up on the other's building. Next slide, I am showing this figure. Next slide. Yeah. You can go through this article, Subramanian et al., case study of the failure of a multi story building. Similarly, Dunmore Bridge at Woodwell, Australia. This is also a case study to teach finite element analysis, methods of analysis for civil engineering students and mechanical engineering students. So you can go through that. Then learning through discussion. So far, I have discussed case studies. You see some examples I have given related to geotechnical engineering and then related to civil engineering, mechanical engineering and corrosion common to all branches of engineering except for computer science, I have given. But this group discussion, all disciplines of knowledge you can implement. Even case study, all disciplines of knowledge can implement. For want of time, I could not give case studies related to social sciences, related to humanities. I cannot because the participants, different disciplines they belong to. Right? But based on these examples, you can find out case studies, appropriate case studies to analyze inside, the, to make the students analyze. Don't analyze. To make the students analyze. You are the facilitator. And then 
give them home assignments. This is another think group share activity, learning through discussion. This activity can be used once in four or five classes by every teacher in every discipline, whatever course you may be teaching, you can make use of it. Students love this strategy. That is the feedback. My earlier participants, they have given feedback that they have been using it. Because since more than eight years, I have been what is called conducting workshops and giving lectures in various colleges and universities. So a few hundreds of participants have been using it. I may have trained thousands of participants, but at least a few hundreds have been using this strategy because it is so, I mean, uh, it works so well to make all the students think in the classroom, all, all the students involved in the classroom. It is like this. Its name is Think Group Share Activity. The first step is, the challenging point in this is, the teacher has to design an open-ended question, even a case study. Most of the unknown case studies are open-ended, right? Even business management studies, you may provide a case study why the particular company, reasons for the failure of the company, you give the case study and ask the reasons for the failure of the company. Let them discuss. You present only the case study. Similarly, you present a problem, a design problem, an open-ended question. Very important. It should have more than one approach and more than one answer. So designing the problem, it needs special effort. Think phase. Suggested duration is three to four minutes. Teacher's activity. Teacher will pose the above problem and ask the students, every student, to think about the problem, analyze the problem, and note down in his notebook. Student's activity. Every student thinks and analyzes the problem. Then group phase. Suggested duration is five to six minutes. Teacher's activity. Teacher will ask the students to group up and exchange their ideas and finally write their analysis of the problem and also plausible solution. Student's activity. Students discuss in groups and each group writes the analysis of the problem and the possible solution. Share phase. Suggested duration is 10 minutes. Now teacher asks each group to present their solutions. He or she facilitates discussion and leads the students towards deep learning. Students ask challenging questions, come out with original ideas and lead the entire class towards deep learning. For example, group C may have completed their exchange of ideas and come out with a possible approach and they will present it. Then the teacher notes down in bullet point briefly. Then group BF may say, sir, we have a different approach. So group F approach separately, the teacher will write down on the board. Then group H may say, sir, we have still different approach. They have taken five steps. We can solve the problem in four steps if it is a problem. Like that after three or four approaches, it will be exhausted, right? There may be 10 groups, there may be 15 groups in your classroom. So other groups may say, sir, we go with group C, we go with group F, we go with group H. In the process, there is a lot of discussion. Why this? Why not this? So in the think phase, every student thinks. In group phase, every student again actively participates in exchange of ideas. In share phase, when one group presents their approach, the other groups 
have focus because their their peers are presenting they have total focus so it will be very interesting discussion and there may be humor also in course of time the teacher may facilitate humor also contextual humor not they uh, are yeah, not humor for the sake of humor contextual humor is very important in every classroom at least in every classroom all the students should enjoy should laugh wholeheartedly at least a minimum of one, once minimum once even higher the better but not uh, more than three or four times because then the continuity will be lost okay at the end of this strategy the teacher and students experience that new knowledge is constructed in the classroom by the students it is called constructivist approach so educational psychologists like pog vygotsky groner they have done so much work on constructivist approach now it is acknowledged all over the world constructivist approach is one of the best active learning strategies teacher plays the role of the motivator and facilitator towards deep learning please note down this point inclusiveness may be taken care of while forming the groups in implementing this activity i don't say that you should implement in every class at least once in four classes it is possible to implement this activity and students enjoy it smart board interactive whiteboard most important tool for active learning in digital classrooms videos ppts discussion interaction all can be integrated sir videos ppts ppts means mostly animated ppts i am against using ppt as a substitute for blackboard don't use it ppt should be carefully used only animated ppt for showing flow, flow charts for showing photographs for showing three dimensional models okay only for that purpose you can use ppt not verbal for verbal information ppt without interaction is not correct sir i am against the pp use of ppt other than these purposes all these can be integrated recorded lessons with classroom interaction can be recorded classroom interaction also can be recorded the recorded lesson with classroom interaction can be used by students again and again If they have any doubts any clarification they can watch the recorded lesson again and again and some students with genuine reasons they may have they may be absent for some class but recorded lesson is there they can go through that so the knowledge gap is removed that way it is a wonderful tool sir right smart board and wifi connectivity together can make a complete digital classroom which facilitates active learning smart board consists of touch sensitive white board computer software then lcd projector still not cost effective for use in all classrooms in many institutions other operational management problems of smart boards even if there are scratches by chance on the smart board on the touch sensitive white board then it is gone you have to purchase a new board which is quite expensive therefore because of these issues i i don't think any higher education is using these smart boards in all their classrooms when nits and iits are not using in all classrooms in seminar halls in a few classrooms they are using small group projects for cooperative learning right so here you please make use of jigsaw project method i will explain what is jigsaw project method please listen to this method very carefully in that it is a group project 
seven to not more than three students, right? Three students in a project. So you design the project in such a way that there are three different tasks. And the outcome of all the tasks becomes the outcome of the project. That is how you have to design the project carefully. Once again, I'm repeating this statement. There should be three tasks, three components in the project, different components. And each task has its own outcome. If you integrate the outcomes of all the three tasks, it becomes the outcome of the whole project. That is how you have to design the project. Then you give the project to three different students, A, B, C, for example. So when you form the group, again, you consider inclusiveness. Diverse learners, you include the project cleverly, without their knowledge, without branding them. So that if the slow learner is not able to complete the task, he has doubt, he has clarification, then he will get clarified by the medium other two participants. Because they cannot do his task. He has to do his task. Because later he Therefore, every student, every student will be paying attention to complete his or her task. In this way, scaffolding of slow learners is also possible. Interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary projects related to design problems lead to innovations and even building of prototypes. Inclusiveness may be taken care of while forming the groups. Special tools for different lead students must be made available in all the classrooms. And hostels in order to enable them to learn effectively without any disadvantage in all the active learning strategies implemented by the teachers. That must be created by the institute. Very important. They should not have any disadvantage because they are blind, because they are deaf and dumb, because they are otherwise physically disabled. Some other disability are not able to walk. Should not be any disadvantage at all. And the facilities must be created in the educational institutions. Even those who cannot walk should be able to do the lab courses as good as others. I'll give you an example here. If you provide an opportunity for all the differently abled students to realize their potential, they can excel the other students. For example, a woman student, blind student in MBA in University of Hyderabad, got the gold medal, got the rank in competition with our healthy students. It's a clear example that they can excel. I give my own example, my own experience of here. I used to conduct offline workshops, three days workshops, morning lectures and afternoon hands on sessions. So in the morning session, I asked a challenging question. One faculty participant has answered immediately. Continue. Then I went to him to appreciate. He was staring at me. Then I could not understand why he was staring at me. 
because I was appreciating him. I was patting him on his back. Good, good answer, very good answer. Then other participants said that sir, he is blind. I was really overwhelmed with joy. I was overwhelmed with joy, really. So I tell you that every student has his or her own potential. So it is the duty of teachers to see that every student realizes his or full potential. That point. Intellectual differences are always there. But what is important is to one's potential, you have to provide opportunities, you have to motivate, you have to use strategies. It's not that Are you able to survive, sir? Are you able to see my slide? No, sir. Sir, slide is not visible and your voice was also uh, lost. We'll say it again. No, sir. Sir, audio video is stopped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to come back. Okay, sir.
is it visible? Now he is my second with Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, fine. He's getting this process. Do not know what it is. So, specially, special tools for different liable students must be made available. In case of continuous and comprehensive assessment, care must be taken. Different students have advantages. Different methods with due age measurement. It's a caretaker for a group of blind students staying in the house, which is in practice in several institutions in the country. Now, guidelines for conducting written examination persons with brain tumor disability. Salient point. See, this is the guidance in the Grant Commission in 2018. This is the latest guidelines. Whenever guidelines are advised, you have to follow the revised guidelines. This PPT will be shared with all of the evening or not lines. I am explaining the leading points only. Every privately student can opt for his own scribe or reader or lab assistant. Request the examination for this. In case the body provides the scribe of lab assistant, qualification of the scribe should not be higher than the minimum qualification required for the The candidate should also to have more than one scribe for different papers. Yeah. Now, are you able to see, sir? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Now, another important point is, if the end semester examination is of three hours duration for the regular students, for healthy students, you must provide a minimum of four hours for different labeled students. In other words, it is called compensatory time, 20 minutes per hour. You may ask me for a unit test. Sometimes it may be less than one hour. In such a case, compensatory must, time must be given proportionately in multiples of five minutes. 
right? These are the guidelines. A few sources of open educational resources. As I mentioned earlier, open educational resources play a vital role today for both teachers and students. You can get the best video lectures from the most qualified and competent professors all over the world in the form of open educational resources. For example, MIT OCW, MIT stands for Massachusetts Institute of Technology, OCW Open Courseware. You go to the website, you can get lecture notes for your discipline of, for your course. You search for open educational resources for your course. You can get their lecture notes, you can get the assignments, you can obtain the video lectures, you can obtain the animated PPTs, everything. So open educational resources will be very useful to learn new strategies. Open educational resources are useful to learn new strategies for differently abled students. Lot of literature is published for teaching learning strategies, for active learning strategies, for differently abled students. Among these, from India, you have NPTEL, National Program for Technology Enhanced Learning, NPTEL, and then Spoken Tutorial, IIT Bombay, very good OERs. These open educational resources are used by all other institutions around the world. All these, even textbooks you have, open textbooks, British Columbia com campus, open textbook, University of Minnesota, open education consortium, right, open Michigan, OER Commons, OER consortium, there are several open educational resources. First of all, for the course which you teach, you find out the best open educational resources. You can suggest to the students, in my opinion, teacher is the best resource. There is no doubt about it. But along with the teacher, you can suggest as many good resources as possible so that the students can have the access from different best resources, including yourself. They can have multiple perspectives. They can have deep insight into the subject. That is important, sir. Surface approach, just at remember and recall level is of no use, sir. It should be at analyze level, evaluate level, and create level. The student should be able to create new knowledge when they go to their workplace. That is very important. So they should be able to reach create level when they are in the universities and colleges. They have to learn. So you have to give opportunities for differently abled students to go to the create level, especially that is possible in the courses in third year and fourth year. Level three courses, it is possible. It is possible, you may be thinking that only very few students will be able to reach that level. In my opinion, if you use appropriate teaching learning strategies, motivational strategies. If you try to connect with every student in your class, and if the student also gets connected with you, then majority of the students 
will achieve the required graduate attributes. They will achieve the required employable knowledge and skills and attitudes. So it is the problem with the teaching learning strategies and with appropriate teaching learning materials for diverse learners. We are meeting only a few learners, sir. Our teaching learning strategy always is a suitable, we always aim at an average learner with one teaching learning strategy. So only few will be benefited, but it is possible to reach out to 80% of the students in my opinion. That is what National Board of Accreditation says. That is what National Assessment and Accreditation Council also says. So 80% of the students should reach the course outcomes to an extent of 80%. That is the guideline, sir. So you have to meet the diverse learners to that target. If you are not able to meet that target, there is some problem. We, we have to look at the problem for ourselves. Ultimately, we have to reach that target. We have to improve upon. That is what is called continuous improvement. Then open educational resources in India, as I said, NPTEL courses. You have video lectures for different courses by professors from IITs and IIC Bangalore. Lecture notes for different courses. I have used the lecture notes for teaching corrosion by Professor Natarajan of IIC Bangalore. These video lectures and lecture notes can be used by the teacher appropriately in the related courses. Swayam, all of you must have so far heard the name Swayam. It's an indigenous IT platform in India that facilitates hosting of all the courses taught in classrooms from ninth class till post graduation. They can be accessed by anyone, anywhere, at any time. The complete form of Swayam is study webs of active learning. You see the word active learning here also. Study webs of active learning from, for young aspiring minds to the program of government of India. All the courses are interactive, prepared by the best teachers in the country and are available free of cost to the residents in India. More than 1,000 specially chosen faculty and teachers from across the country have participated in preparing these courses. Please look at this point, sir. The courses hosted in Swayam are in four quadrants. In one quadrant, you have video lecture. In the second quadrant, specially prepared reading material that can be downloaded and printed. The student can read that. Then self-assessment test. After watching the video, after reading the specially prepared reading material, the student can subject himself or herself to the self-assessment test. If he or she is able to perform, able to get up to 70% in the test, that is fine. Otherwise, again, the process has to be repeated. Again, watching the video lecture, again and again. Again, reading the specially prepared reading material and subject to himself or herself to another self-assessment test, not same self-assessment, another self-assessment test similar to the content, based on the content. Like that, it is a self-learning mode. And you have an online discussion forum for clearing the doubts. If 1,000 students have parts they have registered for the course, then the, they may go on asking the questions in the online discussion forum. One student asked the question. There can be five different answers from different students. Then another question, another some of the students. So thousand students participate in 
learning a particular course along with the teacher. It's a great experience, learning experience for all the students. Swayam Prabha is a group of 32 DTH channels devoted to telecasting of high quality educational programs on 24 by 7 basis using GSAT 15 satellite. This is the home website I, which I have given for Swayam Prabha. The home page gives us the list of channels among which you can choose the channels related to our subject, our course. So these are the list you can go through leisurely which channel is related to your course. Then I shall discuss now the teacher-student relationship. Right kind of teacher-student relationship is necessary to deal with student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education. Right kind of teacher-student relationship is necessary. Mutual trust and respect are very important in teacher-student relationship. Always we hear parents and citizens in the society and teachers telling students should respect the teacher. I always say that it is both ways. Students res must respect the teacher. Teacher also must respect the students. It is mutual. Students must have trust in the teacher. Teacher also must have trust in the students. Mutual trust and respect are very important te teacher-student relationship. When the teachers are respected for their expertise, and appreciate it and have faith in student abilities. Students seek their help, guidance, and encouragement. In turn, the students are appreciated for their willingness to take responsibility, become involved, and do the homework needed to succeed. Most of the teachers show authority in relationship with their students. They believe that only then the students will be under their control and do the tasks assigned to them. So many of my colleagues I observed during the past several years, they always used to show authority. They used to argue with me, only then the students will be under their, under their control. But I used to differ from them. I never expected that the students should be under my control, under my control. I used to always believe in mutual trust and respect. And I always used to believe empathetic relationship with my students. But my students used to do all the tasks assigned to them. There was not even a single occasion that I have to call them or I have to what is called show authority or whatever. No, not a single occasion. If you teach well using appropriate teaching learning strategies, if you connect well with the students, and if the students believe in that you have concern with, for them, if they have any problem, they can go and meet you. You will ad address their problem even outside the classroom then where is the need to show the, the authority? Even if you see educational psychology, educational psychologists also say that authority, any kind of authority, has a negative impact on the relationship with students. Any kind of authority. Many students, especially in professional courses, when there is an internal assessment, they are afraid of the teacher. Because today, 50% of the marks are in the hands of the teacher. 50%. Therefore, they are afraid of the teacher. Any kind of authority has a negative impact on relationship with students. Authority breeds fear. Fear destroys the innate abilities of the students. 
fear destroys the innate abilities of the students, including creativity, spontaneity, inquisitiveness, questioning attitude, and above all, motivation to learn. Students will not actively participate in the learning process, sir. Sir, it is necessary that students question everything, whatever is written in the book, whatever is explained by you. Students have the right to question the authority also. That is important, sir. Nurturing the culture of questioning is very important in our classrooms. It was so difficult for me, especially to teach MSc courses in the beginning, because for several years, they were asked not to question. The culture of questioning was not, never encouraged. Therefore, for first few weeks, I used to struggle again to bring back the nature of asking questions. So finally, once the culture was developed, in every class, I used to mention either I challenge you or you challenge me. Only then there will be deep learning. Otherwise, it is only superficial learning, examination-oriented learning that will not take you anywhere. It is necessary. Therefore, by the time the students come to undergraduate education or postgraduate education, because I used to teach B.Tech classes, MS, M, MSc classes, and M.Tech classes, courses also. So even M.Tech students used to be having fear. So for in the first few classes, I used to dispel fear among the students by building a positive relationship with them. We play the role of facilitator of learning. We may use the phrases like, let us investigate, let us learn together and appreciate the students for their effort in learning. That building a positive relationship with students is very important, sir. Not by authority. Students will never appreciate authority. They, thousands of students talk to me about this point. Building positive teacher-student relationship. Assist students as instructor, facilitator, guide, and mentor. Encourage students. Understand the students under their needs. Foster learning that is relevant to learners' needs. Pay special attention to the students with special needs and differently abled students. Give importance to continuum of increasing student responsibility for decision making. Teachers have to transfer control and students have to take greater responsibility. This is very important, sir. Students must be made more responsible for their learning. Don't do spoon feeding. Don't give directly answers. Let them struggle to solve the problems. Let them be independent learners. That is very important, sir. I quote a great teacher, H.G. Gnot, in this context, responsibility is fostered by allowing students a voice and wherever indicated a choice in matters that affect them. That is very important. By allowing the students a voice and wherever indicated a choice in matters that affect them. That is how we have the choice-based credit system. Sir, you know what the meaning of credit? We are talking about 120 credits in three-year degree program, 160 credits in a four-year degree program. What is the meaning of credit? Theoretically, as per the difference of the credit, one cunt in higher education, I am referring to higher education, one credit means one contact hour and two hours work by the, done by the student outside the class or inside the class. Two hours work done by the students. But because it is very difficult, I would suggest, I would suggest at least one contact hour and equivalent one hour work by the students outside the class. So that is the meaning of credit. 
so students should be made more responsible for their work more accountable for their learning that is very important <laughs> building positive relationship with students again sir am i audible to you yes sir yeah because some disturbance somewhere audible sir ah uh, yeah okay greet students warmly when they arrive each day be affectionate with students show respect and caring for every student be impartial listen to students with empathy make eye contact with every student engage in one to one with every student it is possible sir engaging in one to one with every student is possible sir because you have laboratory courses right so one to one means not in every class by the time one week is over you must have engaged every student provide secure relationship talk to them in pleasant and calm voices very important sir very very important talk to them in pleasant and calm voices even the students who misbehave or mischievous to them also you point out that their activity cannot be tolerated you must point out right you must explain how it is disturbing the class you counsel him outside the classroom there are various other strategies you go use all other strategies provide opportunities for holistic learning experiences with an inquiry approach both inside and outside the classroom inclusiveness is taken care of help students understand classroom expectations redirect the students when they exhibit challenging behavior encourage them to listen to others acknowledge the students for their effort and accomplishments you appreciate the deed or activity of the students but not the students condemn the misdeed or mischief of the students and not the students we should not accept any kind of misdeed or mischief i i never accept accepted i used to condemn the misdeed or mischief and counsel outside the classroom condemning is open openly right nobody has the right to disturb the class nobody has the right to disturb the culture of learning therefore i used to condemn but not the student that is over i never had any kind of neg negative bias on the student on such students no prejudice on such students i used to counsel them after that incident is over outside the classroom separately then get connected with them then there is a i found there is a lot of change in those students they never repeated that kind of misdeed or mischief this is how we have to deal with students there is no prescription sir every student is unique every student needs different strategies we have to discover in the process of listening to them outside the classroom we can discover strategies how to deal with them. never laugh at the students mistakes but for failures try to understand and help them to rectify the mistakes by themselves adopt a supportive style a supportive teaching style that allows for student autonomy can foster increased student interest enjoyment engagement and performance supportive teachers behaviors include listening giving hints and encouragement being responsive to students questions and showing empathy for students nurturing self worth a sense of competence and autonomy give the needed support to different level students strategies with struggling students you see always in every classroom in our country i have observed there will always be students in spite of your appropriate teaching learning strategies best strategies 
always there will be a few students struggling for various reasons with poor academic performance low self efficacy or low motivation because many things are not in your control there are several societal factors which have impact on students there are parental backgrounds home atmosphere has great impact on the students one strategy is with the, when we deal with the struggling students help them how to learn how to learn that is important instead of dumping information teach them how to learn outline specific strategies for completing an assignment note taking and reviewing for examination scaffolding as a technique scaffolding is one instructional technique where the challenge level is gradually raised as students are capable of more complex tasks this technique works well to motivate slow learners always encourage the students to compare with their earlier performance and achieve still better sir this is my suggestion sincere request to all of you do not compare with other students performance every student is unique in his or her own way every student has a unique neural network okay. tell them often that they should not compare with others performance let them compare with the earlier performance in the test one so let let them try to do better improve further improve further so in my courses by the time the end semester examination is over the gaps between the students in performance used to be reduced the range of marking used to be in all my courses i taught students with 60 students in a class 80 students in a class mechanical engineering for example pg students 48 students in class mtech students also right so 30 students in a class different so always the range in my class is between 70 and 95 94 like always that is the range of mark even then there was an external examination also okay so once you use appropriate teaching learning strategies connect well with the students counsel the students wherever necessary the gap that means there will be slow learners by the time the course is over there will be slow learners who will be moderate and fast learners how the teacher should not be can be seen in the quote by h g ginot a great teacher blaming and shaming preaching and moralizing ordering and bossing admonishing and accusing ridiculing and belittling threatening and bribing diagnosing and prognosing these techniques brutalize vulgarize and dehumanize children by h g ginot a great teacher again once again i read it for you please reflect upon this quotation quotation please reflect upon it. very true sir agree yeah okay sir empathetic relationship with students and effective communication with them are very important attributes of a teacher and they have a great positive impact on the effective domain of learning of the students this is the quotation by carl rogers a great social psychologist who had a positive impact on millions of people all over the world he has led 
empathy movement right for a very long time this is his quotation we think we listen but very rarely do we listen with real understanding true empathy yet listening of this very special kind is one of the most potent forces for change that i know call rosers he has another quotation which i present before you we think we listen but very rarely do we listen with real understanding true empathy yet listening of this very special kind is one of the most potent forces for change that i know call rosers guidance counseling and mentoring of students by teachers is necessary in all the institutions of higher education to deal with student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education guidance counseling and mentoring of students is very much important when i say guidance means to indicate to point out to show the way to lead and to direct there are two kinds of guidance one is academic guidance underperformers in a course need academic guidance such as clarification of concepts and doubts while doing assignments tips for preparing for the tests scaffolding and empathetic communication to improve their self efficacy they need your guidance outside the classroom the teachers may have to stay beyond the institute timings quite often to provide academic guidance to such needy students including differently abled students in most of the courses i taught during a span of four decades there were no failures i can say with confidence that it was because of the academic guidance provided to the needy students outside the classroom on a continuous basis second kind of guidance is career guidance it is advisable that one faculty member in each department is equipped with expertise on career guidance of students and a database regarding the opportunities for further studies and employment opportunities in different academic programs organized by the department may be made available which is updated every year the faculty member in charge of career guidance can give a few lectures on different opportunities for further studies as well as employment opportunities after listening to those lectures and going through the database a few students may come to you seeking your further guidance among the shortlisted options by those students this one to one interaction several times will lead to self discovery of the students about their aptitude and competencies and enable them to take a right decision about their future career i played a vital role in the career guidance of a large number of my students and the feedback from them later indicated that it was a right decision taken by them regarding their career counseling counseling again is a series of direct contacts with the individual which aim to offer him assistance in changing his attitude and behavior this quotation again is by carl rosers counseling involves two individuals one seeking help and the other professionally trained person who can help the other there should be a relationship of mutual respect and trust between the two individuals the counselor discovers the problems of the counselee and helps him to set the realistic goals and achieve them though professionally trained persons are employed as counselors in some of the institutions i opine that a few teachers in every institution have the natural abilities and expertise developed by interaction with several students of different socio economic backgrounds different with different problems of adolescence and different mindsets those teachers can develop their expertise further through online courses on counseling teachers who are empathetic by nature and have developed their expertise on counseling can function as counselors for a large majority of the students in need of counseling students will be greatly benefited by teacher counseling my role as a counselor i played the role of counselor also in several cases in which the students themselves came to me with their problems and seeking my help sometimes they knocked at my doors when i was at home and went on explaining their problems 
all those students did very well later after coming out of the problems some of which are the perceived problems in all the counseling sessions i understood that most of us need somebody who is well well informed and matured enough to listen to us with concern and give realistic advice by putting themselves in our place sir am i is my slide visible yes sir yes sir okay 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 thank you okay thank you thank you then mentoring mentoring relationship is a close individualized relationship that develops over time between a student and a faculty member and that includes both caring and guidance hall 2002 defines mentoring as an intentional relationship focused on developing self of relatively unseasoned critic that is student through dialogue and reflection the primary function of such relationship is to develop the students learning capacity by transmitting knowledge organizational culture wisdom and experiences four components these four are called mentoring components the teacher's knowledge the it is mentor's knowledge organizational culture wisdom and experience my experience as mentor several students of mine at ug pg and phd levels chose me as their mentor in its true sense the mentor mentee relationship continued beyond their graduation also in a few cases during our interaction so many times all the four mentoring components namely knowledge culture wisdom and experiences were shared both the mentee and mentor were greatly benefited career guidance counseling and mentoring of students are given weightage for accreditation of institutions of higher education by national assessment and accreditation council nac and for the accreditation of individual academic programs by national board of accreditation nba mentoring system in institutions of higher education if you guidelines the number of mentees assigned to a mentor may be to a maximum of 20 the lower the better but maximum 20 only the mentor may be one of the teachers of the student the mentor mentee relationship may be for a minimum period of one year and may be continued up to graduation of the student if the student wishes so when the students join an academic program the department which offers the program will assign a group of 20 students to the same mentor for the period of one year from second year onwards the choice of the student may also be taken into consideration while assigning a mentor in case of btech programs it is preferable that during the first year one of the teachers of the student may be assigned as mentor from second year onwards one of the teachers of the student's discipline may be assigned as mentor the frequency of meeting of mentor mentees may be once in a fortnight and the dates and time may be scheduled without any prejudice to the normal academic schedule the different labeled students can be part of different groups that is inclusiveness they should not be segregated it is a good practice to provide a slot for mentor mentee meetings in the time table the outcome of the interaction of the meetings may be recorded in the form of a report in a template designed by the institute for the purpose the problems faced by the mentees may be immediately brought to notice of the concern and addressed appropriately the action taken report may be included in the report of the next meeting the record containing the discussions and outcomes of the mentor mentee meetings and the redress of the issues forms the evidence for the weightage by nba or nac it is necessary that every faculty member in higher education involves himself or herself in academic and career guidance counseling and mentoring of a few students every year his or her contribution in all these must be given due weightage in selections and promotions to higher positions conclusion if a teacher is able to provide a congenial learning environment with an inquiry approach and nurtures his or her students to realize their full potential and live in harmony with all existence 
it gives meaning and fulfillment to the life of the teacher only such teachers can do justice in meeting the challenges of student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education my tributes to such great teachers i wish that all of you become such great teachers and you will be able to do justice to student diversity and inclusiveness in higher education and you will be remembered forever by your students thank you very much question answer session see deliberately i have skipped this break because i was worried about these technical issues of disconnection whether it is at my end or at the host end whatever the reason may be so i was opening that door so that uh, it is but opening the door means creating disturbance for all the family members right so therefore i have closed my this camera also so that it will be effective no questions 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 please so now you have more time for questions so actually i keep 30 minutes for question answer session because we have removed that break time 15 minutes we have more time for question answer session any question please not only on student diversity and inclusiveness you have eight themes on any theme you can ask me a question i will be able to answer yes rajkumar sharma ji please ask question sir what do you think about the experiential learning for uh, when the diversity of students are there and yeah. activities uh, activity based learning suppose we are giving to the students yeah uh, in uh, experiential learning what kind of examples are there a very good question in experiential learning essentially you give a mini project mini project not major project mini project and then in order to include to do justice for the student diversity always you give group projects wherein a differently able student is along with the healthy students a slow learner is along with the moderate and fast learners three members group and then you give mini projects right so only through mini projects experiential learning is possible for example you are having an automobile engineering course right so let them open any automobile and then you give them as a teacher you have to provide some fault there let them discover the fault and repair the fault that comes as experiential learning then another example for the students of electronics and communication engineering in your tv you just make some kind of fault in one tv right that must be available to provide experiential learning as a tool in your colleges and universities let the students discover the fault and then rectify the fault that comes as as an example for experiential learning you see a student who has finished mtech in automobile engineering when there is a defect when there is a problem for his bike what does he do he does he will not be able to repair himself because he never underwent the experiential learning he will take to a workshop wherein 
a, a, a dropout a student, high school dropout student will be doing will be doing the repair of his bike because he has done he has learned all that through experiential learning though he does not know the theory but he has known the skill of learned the skill of finding the fault and rectifying the fault very easily whereas mtech student because he has not undergone the experiential learning he will be depending on that similarly in mtech Electronics and communication engineering student or BTech electronics and communication engineering student, if there is a repair for his TV, he will take to the mechanic who is only a high school dropout. So experiential learning is very important. Take them to field studies. Let them have experiential learning. Right? So give them mini projects. Through mini projects, they will have experiential learning. It is possible to design mini projects for every course. That is what is happening in IIIT Hyderabad, which is uh, providing mini projects to provide experiential learning in majority of the courses. Did, I, you, answer your, did I answer your question, sir? Yeah, okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Yeah, yeah. Questions, please. Questions, please. Sir, may I ask a question? Yes, sure. Sir, special education is the practice of uh, educating students in a way that accommodates their individual differences, disabilities yeah. and special needs. Yeah. This mainly involves the individual plan systematically monitored arrangement of teaching yeah. procedures, adapted yeah. equipments and yeah. materials yeah. and accessible settings also. Yeah. Now, higher education bring everything uh, that is religious yeah. cultural tradition within a yeah, single yeah. Uh, roof okay yeah. where they celebrate the diversity as well as inclusivity now yeah. how far it may uh, yeah. address a group yeah. of uh, large people and how far it may address the group of uh, small people yeah actually when you have always our classes especially undergraduate classes are large classes so generally uh, ranging between 40 and 80 or undergraduate classes, size, class size. So when you have four contact hours, you can have three contact hours for teaching and keep one contact hour for tutorials. In tutorials, you have a batch of 20 students. Suppose you have 60 students in your class. In tutorials, you divide them into three groups. Three different teachers will handle those tutorial classes. In those tutorial classes, you group in such a way that inclusiveness is taken care. And then you see, you give task, different tasks for fast learners and slow learners, different tasks. Because for slow learners, there is a gap of knowledge. In order to fill that gap of knowledge, you provide the appropriate task, appropriate problem or appropriate question to answer, to solve. For fast learners, you give challenging problems in that group. So then if the student, the slow learner has a doubt, he can clarify that doubt from the fast learner, but he has to work out for himself. The teacher will be monitoring and teacher will be also facilitating the whole class. Teacher will be clarifying some doubts wherever necessary to fill the knowledge gap. That is how for every four hours, three contact hours for teaching and one tutorial hour uh, is a good practice for all the undergraduate programs. That is my suggestion. You have suggested a very good point. You are quite right. Special tools are needed. 
even earlier, a few years ago, the differently abled students used to be segregated and the students with special needs were tutored differently in a different way. But now, even in higher education, the, include, the idea for inclusiveness is that they should be along with other healthy students. It is the responsibility of the institution to provide the facilities for the blind students to learn along with others in the classroom itself. And then it is the responsibility of the institutions to provide the facilities in the hostels also for blind students, deaf and dumb students, whatever the facilities are needed. Today, there are several tools and technologies are available for differently abled students when compared to earlier times. Now they can perform better than earlier times because of the aid of technology and different tools appropriate to those differently abled students. So now, more or less, they are at par with the mainstream with naturally existing differences in the one's potential. So all the disadvantages are removed because of the technology, right? But it is the institute's responsibility to provide such tools for them exclusively in the classrooms and also hostels wherever residential accommodation is needed. So if you have further questions, you please ask me, sir. I want to answer all your questions. You have, you are, you have asked a very you have touched a very important area. Please ask me, sir. Rightly said, sir. Uh, that uh, inclusive classroom with diverse learning, cooperative learning, and peer tutoring okay, yeah, should be actually yeah. promoted. Promoted. Yeah, for, yeah, yeah. yeah, definitely. Definitely. That yeah. will help the cooperative learning. Yeah, and yeah, it will yeah. uh, really serve the purpose of diverse learners. Diverse because uh, we will yeah. have uh, yeah we will have a heterogeneous group of people we are addressing to yeah thank you very yeah. much sir you elaborated yeah. very nicely sir thank yeah. you thank very much you. thank you thank you any other questions it is nice that we have removed that break 15 minutes we have more time for discussion actually i allow this question answer session uh sir uh, excuse yeah. me sir can yeah. i ask a question yeah sure 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 uh, sir, but uh, for a better understanding, uh, can I ask in Hindi language? Yeah, but you can ask me in Hindi language, but I will answer you in English language. Okay, okay, it's okay, sir. Thanks. Uh, sir, I want to say that I have seen the session of the day that we are trying to come to skillful learning for children. In children, we are trying to be job-oriented क्वालिटी uh, उसमें डेवलप uh, होने को होना स्टूडेंट्स में इसलिए हम प्रयास कर रहे हैं लेकिन ये ऐसा लग रहा है कि जो भी क्वालिटी डेवलपमेंट होगी या जो भी uh, होगा उसके लिए सिर्फ जो प्राइवेट uh, जॉब के हिसाब से ही uh, uh, उनको तैयार किया जा रहा है ऐसा कुछ लगता है तो इसके बारे में कुछ मार्गदर्शन करिए कि गवर्नमेंट जॉब अगले इस कुछ में रहेंगे नहीं रहेंगे उसके बारे में कुछ लगता नहीं है कि जैसे कि सेशन हो रहे उसमें से ऐसा लग रहा है कि सब प्राइवेटाइज के हिसाब से जॉब्स वगैरह मिलेंगे बच्चों को ऐसा कुछ लग रहा है इट्स अ वेरी वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन सर यू हैव आस्ट एन एक्सेलेंट क्वेश्चन एक्चुअली what is important is total number of jobs must increase. All of us welcome that. But it is not that government should escape from its responsibility of providing a job opportunities and throwing everything on private privatization. I do not agree with that kind of scenario. Government should not shirk from its responsibility. Right, so government is shirking its from its responsibility, and it is not increasing the number of employment opportunities. Government has to do take total responsibility of providing 
employment opportunities as much as possible besides that the private employment opportunities also are there then the total number of employment opportunities will be increased and more number of graduates will be able to get the jobs right so that is one point second point is that is most important point you have asked a really wonderful question because government is not able to you open a large number of universities central government only recently since last 10 years it has opened up central universities prior to that there were no no expansion of central universities prior to that only since last 10 years private universities central universities new central universities have come up new iits have come up new nits have come up okay but that also is in small number but what about state government universities state government is trying to escape from its responsibility and allowing more and more private universities to be opened. Now, a stage will come very soon that private universities will outnumber the government universities, for sure, right? So that is one aspect. Secondly, for various positions related to public service examinations, where so many positions are kept vacant, and it is government's responsibility to provide opportunity for skilled uh, personnel, semi-skilled personnel, unskilled personnel. It is the responsibility of the government to provide opportunity. That is very, very important, sir. That is the obligation even as per the constitution, right? So once government does its duty, then Private universities and private companies, private industries also develop along with public sector undertakings. Public sector undertakings should, should also flourish. It is not at the cost of public sector undertakings. Then once these are doing well, let them also furnish so that overall number of employment opportunities is increased. That is one answer to your point. Question. Another answer is, it is important that even the private universities and government universities should try to improve upon the employable knowledge and skills of the students. Some time ago, a few years ago, when Abdul, Abdul Kalam, I think uh, sometime in uh, 2008 or 2012, in Bangalore University, convocation address, ex-president Sri Abdul Kalamji mentioned, Un unemployment is not the problem. Employable skills and knowledge and attitudes is the problem in the country. That is what he mentioned. And various surveys also mention that even in engineering graduates, only 12% even in computer science and engineering graduates, only 12% of the graduates coming out of the institutions have the required employable skills and knowledge. Others do not have. Therefore, we are producing a large number of graduates. Sir, there are four parameters. The first parameter, access to higher education, access. So our gross enrollment ratio is reasonably improved to an extent of 28% overall. At the time of independence, it was 0.47%, gross enrollment ratio in higher education. Now we have 28%. We must be proud of it, no doubt. But at what cost? We have not done much for equity. We have not done much for inclusiveness. We have not done much for the quality. These three parameters are also to be taken care of simultaneously uh, along with access. Access, equity, inclusiveness, and quality of higher education must be improved upon in private colleges. See, private colleges and universities should be from based on the funds from the corporate social responsibility and from philanthropy. 
it should not should not lead to commercialization once it leads to commercialization quality will be sacrificed sir always we see that therefore it is the government's responsibility to see that in private universities and colleges also equity and inclusiveness are taken care of right so only then it's not that a few institute here and there implement equity justice and quality then wonders will not happen miracles will not happen only a large number of graduates who come out of the institutions into the society should have employable skills employable knowledge and employable attitudes these three are very very important very very important and for that the students have employable knowledge skills and attitudes it is the responsibility of the government it is the responsibility of the private companies to provide the number of jobs the number of employment opportunities for these graduates who have the required graduate attributes so these two are equally important sir this is my answer to my your question my hindi mein is tarah se achhi itna achhi tarah se baat nahi kar sakta hu samajh sakta hu so i think uh, my answer are you satisfied with my answer sir if you have any further very nice answer uh, i am very uh, thankful for you uh, and given you uh, you give me the such answer thank you sir very very good any other questions questions please questions please at least another 10 minutes we shall spend with question and answer session no further questions yeah other questions yes, yes sir yeah, yeah. Uh, good evening sir good sir evening. the session was excellent but yeah. my question is about the present scenario and attitude of students yeah they always think that they know more than the teachers yeah. and sometimes they may be yeah. but they don't but they also don't have any serious need about their studies in future Yeah. and especially happened with the students of art background or yeah. the students coming from rural background yeah at that time as a teacher what yeah. we have to do yeah please guide yeah. sir that's, yeah that's a very good question very good question actually there are many challenges and uh, issues in implementation of the student diversity and inclusive education see colleges and universities are a part of the society and it is a mini society by itself the college or university is a mini society which is a part of a larger society sir we are not in isolation the negative effects of society are throwing challenges on the implementation of positive aspects in the universities and colleges this is a very very important point sir and the entertainment industry has taken over sir students are more interested in entertainment they are least interested in learning that is another point sir the third point is there is not this self discovery in up to plus 2 what actually is their interest what is their competence they don't have any idea at all just like that they join in engineering or science or arts so there is a mismatch between their competence and interest and their actual course in which they are studying why that mismatch that is because again effect of our society our society has not come out of that kind of uh, what is called uh, 
a block, a big block that only engineering and science, medical, these are good professions, right? The society has not come out of the block that whatever the students are interested in, let us encourage them to study. If the student is interested in music, let him pursue that. If the student is interested in painting, let him pursue that. As at least as a hobby, at least as a hobby. That is another point. There is a mismatch in what they are in, actually interested in, what they are competent, and what they are studying. There is a mismatch in majority of the students. That is another point. Then there is a link between the question of the previous participants and this question. Many students have the problem of insecurity. What will I do after for, for completing this BA? What will I do after completing this BSc? There is insecurity. They know that there is no job available. No, there are no jobs available for them. That insecurity makes them very, very much having low self-efficacy. That is another point. Students from rural background. Already they have very low self-efficacy, low self-confidence. Therefore, they are not enjoying the learning. That is another point. And another most important is, point is the gap of prerequisite knowledge. Up to plus two, because of the question paper pattern, because of the choice in the question paper, many students study only 50% of the syllabus still get first class marks because of the choice. Therefore, when they come to higher education, there is a knowledge gap, especially in mathematics, economics, accounts, physics, chemistry, life sciences. There is a big knowledge gap in courses where the prerequisite knowledge, without that prerequisite knowledge, they cannot proceed further. They cannot understand anything. Therefore, in the classrooms, they are not able to understand anything. That is another reason why the students with low self-efficacy, they are suffering. So my suggestion for this is, you have 15 days induction program for the students. So during the induction program, during the first few days itself, you conduct a, a, some kind of test and find out the students, especially from rural background, Organize them some English speaking courses, English grammar courses, at least two hours per day. That means 15 days, 15 into 2, 30 hours vigorously with a ratio of 20 students or 30 students and one teacher like that vigorously so that their self-confidence will be better. They will be able to speak better. They will be able to write better. Right. So that is one suggestion. Similarly, mathematics, whatever the prerequisite knowledge gap for studying mathematics course in BA or BSc or physics or accounts or economics, that gap can be removed by conducting two hours in each of those subjects, depending upon the, their uh, major areas, major subjects in the study. Two hours, total four hours you can spend on it's a kind of bridging, like bridge courses, right, to fill the knowledge gap. Then they are more comfortable in studies. Now you have asked another student, another question. Some students appear to be more smart and they may be more knowing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So you give them challenging questions. You give them challenging mini projects. Then they are done with that. Right, so then they will come down to the reality. Then they they will know how much they know. Then they will know that they are at the beginning of learning. Right, so that is necessary, sir. Those who 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 are known for that kind of style, give them challenging assignments. That is very necessary. The, for, during my first year BTEC teaching. Many of my students used to say, sir, 
what is all this we are able to finish very soon so we are spending time very idle in a, in a very lazy way it is not challenging at all then i told my director sir let us introduce some student innovation projects let us earmark some fund 10 lakh fund but it should be interdisciplinary not single discipline a btech student from mechanical engineering electrical engineering electronics engineering together should do an interdisciplinary project and build a prototype the institute will give for each group to a maximum of 1 lakh rupees for consumables and for other expenditure for tools and other expenditure right so let them let us send them to the national level competitions but they should build prototypes not just some ideas gathering some information for literature so that is how the challenging uh, students are given challenges that is how we have to deal with the challenging students there will be students who will be doing mischief there will be students who will be doing mischief and misdeeds disturb your classes then the, the idea is you redirect them redirect them immediately you give them an assignment right you you ask them to give answer a particular question that is not enough then you ask them to later you suggest to them so we will discuss separately we on some time evening time we will meet and discuss know each other like that clever way i used to do like that challenging students i used to meet them separately talk to them and then there will be a common point common thread somewhere somewhere i used to listen to them and then i used to understand there is some problem for them so i used to discover the make them discover that problem and then show concern for that for that redressal of that pro particular problem most of the problems are adolescent problems right so in order to escape from that they exhibit that kind of behavior so in that those it's a kind of mini counseling sessions so two three sessions so then they are they are i mean in every class i used to observe them i used to show special care for them so then they they are at par with others they they are uh, i mean uh, their misdeeds mischiefs they are all they have all disappeared they have become normal so like that there are there is no prescription but once we try to understand very seriously spend time and discuss with our colleagues discussion with your colleagues gives you it makes you i mean uh, equip with yourself several strategies always a discussion is very important then you can two three student two three teachers together consistently implement some strategies then there will be some improvement definitely improvement but it depends upon several other conditions right so everything is not uh, under the control of the teacher or the university right so this is there are several practical problems there are several challenges even if you wish to implement student diversity and inclusive education thank you sir thank you very much sir. if you, thank if you, you sir. have any other question you can ask me sir any other questions very good questions in this session i am extremely happy uh, i mean these are all different questions no other session i have faced this question when the job opportunities government jobs project so very good questions and then uh, differently able students to how to gather this how to provide the facilities and then uh, these are challenging students rural students how to deal with them these are very very good questions right you please go through the my ppt and uh, most of your questions will be answered or answered in my videos my channel name is professor p a o r o f e s s o r b v aparao that is my channel's name there are uh, nearly 25 videos even how to set good multiple choice questions 
right? So how to do the curriculum design. So all those videos I have specially prepared with great effort, right? So my PPT will be shared. This PPT will be shared with all of you. So after this lecture is over, I will share the PPT with Professor Mahmoud Atik. He will share in turn with all of you. In my PPT, my email ID also is there. So in my email, you can contact me to email ID. But for all your questions, you go through my videos, you will get answer, right? Only because I cannot reach out to so many millions of teachers in the country. Therefore, I have chosen that channel. So I am continuously uh, uploading, preparing, putting in all my sharing the entire expertise I which I have gained from this society. I am trying to give back to the society and that I have selected that YouTube as a channel. So I am receiving good feedback. Even holistic education and secular spirituality. So what is spiritual education? I have explained in my video. So we'll go through another video on academic audit and quality assurance in higher education. If all the universities follow, you will get definitely minimum I I assure you NAC A grade is the minimum. If you follow the entire whatever explained, discussed in the video, it is 21 minutes video. So you will, minimum you will get NAC A grade. If you implement totally, you will get NAC A++ grade, I assure you. Any other questions, please? Thank you, sir. Very nice session, sir. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So, organizers can conclude now because uh, we have not given any break for the participants. Right? So, if there are no questions, organizers can conclude. If there are questions, I am available here. So whatever I have discussed, whatever I have explained is completely based on my experience. So because it is based on my experience, it is reality. It is not utopian ideas. It, whatever reality, even teacher-student relationship, exactly from my experience. I have put it on paper. Even mentoring, whatever I have done, I have put it in on paper. I used to have redressal of all the concerns from the uh, my mentees. Twenty mentees used to be allotted to me. Immediately, whatever they say, this is the problem. The next day itself, I used to have the redressal and inform the students and the action taken report. Next meeting, after once in a week, we used to meet. In the next meeting itself, action taken report is prepared. And then uh, the mentees and me sign on that report and it is there in the file, mentor mentee meeting file. Because we, for everything, whatever you do for innovations, innovative methods, for everything, you maintain record. And also, I also advise you, you try to maintain teacher teacher's portfolio, teaching portfolio for every course. Whatever new things you have done, you record there. Even your experiences, you record there. 
So the teaching portfolio actually in, in the other countries is given weightage in all promotions and new selections. It is very important. In our country, teaching is not teaching experience is counted, but quality of teach, teaching is not considered in any promotions. Only research publications are considered. I don't agree with that. Teaching portfolio must be taken into consideration as a given due weight is not teaching experience alone. Even young teachers may be excellent teachers. They may have very good teaching portfolio. Right. So they must be encouraged. हेलो सर या हेलो हाँ दो मिनट में अंकुर अंकित ठाकुर सर पहुंच रहे हैं सर वोट ऑफ थैंक्स के लिए मैंने फोन okay, किया okay. था अभी सर को हाँ सर I am grateful to all of you. I am thankful to all of you for your nice words in the chat sorry, box. Sir, sorry, for extremely sorry, sir, uh, because uh, there is some uh, closing of uh, this no, no, accounts no, no, here. That's and okay. our finance officer has called urgently with uh, regarding yeah. discussion issue. So I am extremely okay. sorry, sir. No, no, not at all. Not at all. We have, we have been discussing till now. Yes, sir. We have we have not even uh, given a break because the take of the technical issues. Suppose if the break is there again, some problem may be there like that. We have continued, and there were excellent questions from this batch of uh, participants. Thank, really so Thank you so yeah. much, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you so much, sir. We are really yeah. grateful to you, sir, for yeah. sparing your time, sir. Because uh, in spite of your busy schedule, you are always there for <laughs> support and uh, mentoring to our participant, not only our participant to our institution. So on behalf of Malvi Mission Teacher Training Center, and Gargay Baba Amrauti University, I extend my sincere gratitude to Professor Bivi Apparao sir for being with us, enlighten us on a, such a complex topic. Sir, you have explained this complex topic in the very simplest way. And really, sir, whatever may be the strategies you have given here, we will implement uh, to enhance the GER as well as inclusivity in our HEIs. Yeah, yeah. So I am very much thankful to you, sir, on behalf of MMTTC Sandgarge Baba Amrat University. I am once again express my sincere yeah. thanks to Professor uh, Apparao, sir. And with the kind consent of Professor Apparao, sir, I would like to declare that this session will be over here. Yeah. Thank you so I will much. send the PPT of my lecture now. You yes, can sir. kindly share with all the participants. Yeah, yeah, sir. Definitely, I will share, sir. Definitely. Okay, okay participants, okay. Sir, uh, there are a couple of instructions. First of all, I am very much thankful to each and everyone for their active participation in this program. As you have know that this is a last day of this program. So we will take some couple of feedback, uh, oral feedback. Uh, participant who will willingly ready to give the couple of feedbacks, uh, they can do it now. Please every, uh, please anyone. Uh, yes, Dr. Sharma sir, please. Yes, sir. Uh, in the last 10 days, Continuously, we are attending the all sessions, and really, sir, uh, Ankit Thakur, sir, we are taking very hard uh, initiatives for uh, providing the such kind of very uh, inclusive lectures, and all the lectures who have given their uh, means uh, uh, different new ideas, 
and their uh, sessions are very energetic and each and every session we got a new thing for uh, our student so we are very very thankful for such kind of uh, faculty development workshop organized by sant gadge baba amravati university and uh, in a 10 days we are enjoyed well and we have asked so many questions and answers thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you sharma sir we are really grateful to you sir because your feedback will help us to improve our strategy or the program uh, conducting program methods so that will be really face to face program is suppose you are going to organize yes sir, so it yes. will be helpful for us yes sir what uh, sir one week couple of couple of days uh, what will couple of days after going couple of days ending of this financial year from upcoming financial that is 2023 or 24 25 we are coming with the program of leadership development okay sir okay sir and that program will be conducted at uh, district level uh, as far as concerned with our jurisdiction amravati university jurisdiction that will be we are going to conduct this program at district level some of the mentor institute will be identified and uh, after a discussion at a length couple of uh, institute has been finalized but uh, i will not the authority to tell here the name of that institutions because that will be decided by the honorable vice chancellor sir so within couple of days you will get uh, the information of uh, that particular academic leadership development program thereafter uh, there will be a two days program for teacher connect uh, that will be uh, M- mmttc will be ca- <coughs> coming with that two uh, two days program the concept of behind of that program is whatever may be the participants we have connected uh, or the teacher fraternity we have connected through nep sensitization program there will be a gathering of uh, these teachers for two days on a different topics there may be a topic uh, n number of topics are there like as the indian knowledge system and uh, discussing the major minor issues development of uh, some kind of courses credit courses so that will be the issues via moocs n number of uh, challenges are there so that uh, will be uh, we will come up with that program in couple of days and i will share the details uh, as well as we are connecting to the whatsapp group also so you will get the sir uh, alert and uh, messages of that program in our whatsapp group sir yes sir the subject wise fdp also required in yes, major sir. and minor subject yes yes definitely sir we are planning on that sir we are uh, making planning on that because uh, we are supposed to be conducting a workshop awareness workshop bos wise okay uh, we you, are sir. focusing first of all uh, board of studies members and then after we will go for further sir yes sir Okay, thank you so much, sir. Yes, is there anyone who will express their vote of th- uh, who will express their views? Or कोई है जो feedback देना चाहेगा? Hello. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Yes, please. Huh. Sir, uh, as this program organized for ten days, and we all joining the online meeting. Sir, I very much enjoyed it, and all the host uh, asking questions and discussing it, and their information is very much informative for us. That uh, we can uh, very much uh, enjoy and. Uh, uh, sir, थोड़ा इस हिंदी में बोलते हो? हाँ सर, please please. हाँ, okay. Uh, sir, काफी हमको पढ़ाने में भी help हुई है इस चीजों से, और काफी examples भी हमको मिले हैं जो हमने बच्चों को बताया भी है. तो सर बहुत मजा आया सर इन दस दिनों में डॉक्टर गोस्वामी सर सबसे पहली बात तो हिंदी में बोलते वक्त हम सॉरी नहीं कहते <laughs> हमारी राष्ट्रभाषा है हमें अभिमान होना चाहिए दिस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग सेकंड थिंग इज दैट कि आपने जो कहा तो मैं ऑन द फर्स्ट डे जब हम लोगों ने प्रोग्राम इनोग्रेट किया था या हमने पहला हमारा सेशन स्टार्ट किया था दैट टाइम आई हैज टोल्ड दैट कि हम यहाँ पर नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी से रिलेटेड डॉक्यूमेंटेशन प्रोवाइड करने के लिए नहीं है क्योंकि डॉक्यूमेंट्स तो ये पब्लिक डोमेन में अवेलेबल है आपको एनईपी का कुछ मटेरियल uh, चाहिए मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी पे मटेरियल चाहिए आईकेएस पे चाहिए आप जस्ट इंटरनेट पे गूगल पे गूगल को पूछ लीजिए गूगल आपको बता देगा बट वी आर हियर टू प्रिपेयर अ ब्रेन सेट ऑफ द माइंड सेट ऑफ आवर अकेडमिक फर्टिनिटी टूवर्ड्स द इम्प्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ एनईपी दिस इज अवर फर्स्ट टारगेट जो हम लोगों ने यहाँ से प्रोग्राम जो जिस था हमारे प्रोग्राम का हम लोगों ने जो जिस क्योंकि एन नंबर सेंटर्स पे ये प्रोग्राम लॉन्च हो रहे 
लेकिन हमने जो जीस रखी थी यहाँ पे सबसे पहली जीस हमारी यही थी कि जो भी प्रोग्राम हम लोग यहाँ पे ऑर्गेनाइज करें और वट एवर मे बी द पार्टिसिपेंट आर पार्टिसिपेंट आर अक्रॉस द कंट्री हम लोगों को उनका ब्रेन सेट प्रिपेयर करना है क्योंकि सर देखिए एन इम्प्लीमेंटेशन में बहुत से चैलेंजेस है आज ड्यूरिंग द एंटायर कोर्स हमने कुछ चैलेंजेस डिस्कस किए कुछ हो सकता है वो हमारे इसमें पार्ट में ना आए हो लेकिन बहुत से चैलेंजेस है इम्प्लीमेंटेशन के लिए लाइक एज दी लैक ऑफ फैकल्टी मेंबर्स लैक ऑफ इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर देयर आफ्टर फंडिंग इश्यूज और हमारे रीजनल बेस्ड प्रॉब्लम जो है वह अलग है ऐसी बहुत सी चीज़ें हैं लेकिन यहाँ पे उन चीज़ों को आउटकम करते वक्त ओवरकम करके हम नए सॉल्यूशंस के साथ पॉसिबल सॉल्यूशंस के साथ कैसे सामने बढ़ सकते हैं यह ब्रेन सेट हमारे माइंड में प्रिपेयर होना चाहिए ये हमारा पहला टारगेट था गोस्वामी सर तो आपका फीडबैक देख के लगता है कि हम कुछ तो हमारा इम्प्रूवमेंट है डेफिनेटली सर और अगले टाइम से भी हम इसमें कुछ इम्प्रूवमेंट अगर कर, चा, आप चाहते हैं या अगले बैचेस को कुछ इम्प्रूव करना चाहते हैं तो उस तरीके का भी फीडबैक बहुत अप्रिशिएबल रहेगा अगर कोई एक्सप्रेस करता है तो इज देर एनी वन हेलो हाँ यस सर प्लीज गायकवाड़ सर गायकवाड़ सर बोल दो हाँ गायक सर एक एनईपी कि विद्यापेक्षा शिक्षक नॉलेज विद्यार्थी साइकोलॉजी ये पकड़न अपन एनईपी का जो प्रोग्राम है तो इच्छेनुसार विद्या इच्छेनुसार अपन शिकवत है तो ये साइकोलॉजी का इफेक्ट जास्त है कि शिक्षक नॉलेज वाल पाजे सर दो गोष्टी गायकवाड़ सर तुम्हें जो संगित तो दोनों गोष्टी अपन इन्क्लूड करना चाहिए प्रयत्न करते नंबर एक गोष शिक्षक नॉलेज वाड़ पाजे हा दृष्टिकोन तो रिसर्च बेस वर जाऊ शकत सर हरकत नहीं शिक्षक नॉलेज वाढ़ने फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट कर प्रोग्राम खूब दिवसपासन चालूच है मजे फैकल्टी डेवलपमेंट इज अ कंटिन्स प्रोसेस सर का ही एक दिवस अपन दा दिवस ट्रेनिंग देव कु नॉलेज वाढ़ू शको मैं आ कभी मता नहीं आज मता सर तुम्हें इतने सहमत ही आल गायकवाड़ सर दूसरी गोष्ट जी आप स्टूडेंट प्रस्पेक्टिव ने संगित क्या गोषी से मैं सर शंबर टक्के सहमत है अपने अपने इधे स्टूडेंट टीचर रेशो क्या मेन्टॉर मेन्टी हा जो रेशो है हा हा रेशो योग्य पद्धति ने सुधारने ग्रामीण भागो अपने आदिवासी भागो रेयर कोअर भागो तो शेवट का विद्यार्थी हा एजुकेशन सीस्टम मध्य शिक्षण प्रवाहत पाजे हाग का मुख्य उद्देश्य है सर एनईपी मधला मुख्यत्व उद्देश्य जो है कि एक एम्प्लॉबिलिटी स्किल प्रोवाइड करने आ जो शेवट का घटक है तेल शिक्षण मुख्य प्रवाहत आने है दोन महत्वाचे विषय सर तमें है यह दोनों विषयाला घेन आप काम करते हैं सर ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर ओके सो ओके पार्टिसिपेंट्स देर इज कपल ऑफ इंस्ट्रक्शन देखिए एक तो अभी ओरल कुछ ओरल फीडबैक्स हमने लिए एक फीडबैक जो है मेकेनिज्म एम एम टी टी सी पोर्टल जो है हमारा जहां से आपने रजिस्ट्रेशन किया था उसमें एक फीडबैक मेकेनिज्म है देर आर थ्री क्वेश्चंस वहां पे तीन क्वेश्चंस है एंड वन कमेंट बॉक्स एक कमेंट बॉक्स है आपको क्या करना है आपके एम एम टी टी सी के इसमें पंडित मदन मोहन मालवीय मिशन टीचर एजुकेशन प्रोग्राम जो है जहां से आपने रजिस्ट्रेशन किया था वहां पे लॉग इन करना है लेफ्ट हैंड साइड पे फीडबैक का ऑप्शन है आपको फीडबैक भरना है लेकिन अब प्रॉब्लम एक आएगी कि इसमें कहीं कहीं पे एरर आएगा एरर आएगा इसका कारण ऐसा है कि जो कमेंट बॉक्स दिया हुआ है उसमें आपको कुछ तो भी टाइप करना है यानी आपको कमेंट्स देना है जस्ट नॉट ओनली कि क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करके तीन क्वेश्चन सॉल्व करके छोड़ दिए कमेंट बॉक्स में कुछ ना कुछ लिखना पड़ेगा उसी के बाद वो सक्सेसफुली सबमिट हो पाएगा दिस इज द फर्स्ट थिंग सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट मैं सभी से और भी एक रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि जिन लोगों ने अपने रिक्वायर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट अभी तक अपलोड नहीं किए हुए हैं कुछ है ऐसे लोग आई विल पोस्ट द लिस्ट ऑन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप कुछ ऐसे लोग हैं जिन्होंने अभी तक डॉक्यूमेंट्स अपलोड नहीं किए तो दे विल अपलोड देयर डॉक्यूमेंट रिक्वायर्ड डॉक्यूमेंट्स विद इन कपल विद इन कपल ऑफ डेज आई थिंक टुडे और टुमारो इट इज पॉसिबल इफ इट इज पॉसिबल और थर्ड थिंग इज दैट कि प्रोग्राम पार्टिसिपेशन के जो सर्टिफिकेट्स है यू विल गेट द ई कॉपीज ऑफ दिस सर्टिफिकेट बाय ट्यूजडे सेकेंड ऑफ अप्रिल ट्यूजडे टू ओके क्योंकि क्या होता है आपका अटेंडेंस का और मार्क्स का डेटा यह यूजीसी के पोर्टल पे अपलोड करना होता है देर आफ्टर यूजीसी विल गेट अप्रूव दैट प्रोग्राम अप्रूव दैट अटेंडेंस एंड देन आफ्टर वी विल इश्यू द सर्टिफिकेट तो यह प्रोसेस है तो आपको ट्यूसडे को सर्टिफिकेट्स आपके व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप पे और ईमेल एड्रेस से मिल जाएगी ठीक है 
और किसी के कुछ क्वेश्चन है या क्यूरीज है तो आप डेफिनेटली बता सकते हैं अभी कोई नेक्स्ट जैसा एमसीक्यूज वगैरह देने वाले हैं क्या सर आप नहीं सर नो एमसीक्यूज आर देयर सर मींस आवर असाइनमेंट इज ओवर यस सर असाइनमेंट इज ऑलरेडी कंप्लीटेड ओके थैंक यू सर यस डॉक्टर पाथरीकर मैडम डॉक्टर ममता पाथरीकर मैडम हां सर आपने हाथ ऊपर किया हुआ कुछ कहना है तो बोलिए मैम फीडबैक दे जाओ तो फीडबैक हां बताइए ना मैडम क्या हुआ हा जो कोर्स झाला सर आपला 10 दिवसाचा हां 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 प्लीज प्लीज मैडम प्लीज अभ्यास क्रमाचे जे बहुविद्या शाखीय स्वरूप आहे ते विद्यार्थ्यांना विविध विषयाचे संशोधन करण्यास प्रोत्साहित करेल अच्छा आणि एक व्यापक आधारित शिक्षण प्रदान करेल आणि ज्याने आपला आणि विद्यार्थ्यांचाही सर्व पैलूंचा विकास होऊ शकेल अशी मी आशा बाळगतो Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you so much. But it will be, it will be depend upon how we can implement this in our institutions with our students in our daily teaching, learning as well as the research. So, teacher ही है या शिक्षक ही है जो इस समाज का परिवर्तन कर सकता है और समाज के परिवर्तन की रिस्पांस जवाबदारी जो है जवाब दही जो है ये शिक्षकों के ऊपर बहुत ज़्यादा है. इसीलिए सभी से मेरी ये रिक्वेस्ट रहेगी कि आप सभी इस यहाँ पे जो इस छोटा सा जो है हम लोगों का प्रयत्न था यहाँ पे आपको जो कुछ भी मिला हो यह आपके आप इंस्टीट्यूशन में आपके कॉलेज में आपके सोसाइटी में इंप्लीमेंट करने का प्रयत्न रखें देर आफ्टर मैं एच आर मालवी मिशन शिक्षक के प्रशिक्षण केंद्र संत गाड़गे बाबा अमरावती की ओर से आप सभी का धन्यवाद करता हूँ बिकॉज ईच एंड एवरी लेक्चर यू आर टेकिंग द एक्टिव पार्टिसिपेशन and uh, asking the question discussing your queries with the expert this is really wonderful third thing is that hrdc is uh, mmttc is offering a wide range of programs so i will uh, request uh, not request i will urge every uh, each and every one please be stay connected with the hrdc uh, mmttc sant gadge baba amravati university in near future if you have any kind of ideas innovative ideas with regards to the faculty development or the student development research development you can collaborate with the mmttc sant gadge baba amravati university for conducting of such kind of programs we will always offer our uh, <coughs> our resources as well as our infrastructure for such kind of trainings and awareness programs not only at amravati university at your institute also so we will really thankful to each and every one if the, and uh, they will <coughs> send a proposal of collaboration to us we will really appreciate सेकेंड थिंग इज दैट कि हम लोग आप अभी जो पार्टिसिपेट किए हैं इस प्रोग्राम में यह प्रोग्राम आगे भी रन होने वाले हैं तो आप ही नहीं आपके कॉलेज के जो आपके कलीग्स हैं आपके साथी हैं आपके यहाँ कुछ रिसर्च स्कॉलर हो गए कुछ सी एच बी टीचर्स हो गए उनको भी आप मोटिवेट कीजिए प्रेरित कीजिए इस प्रोग्राम में पार्टिसिपेट होने के लिए और हो सकता है कि आपका एक कॉलेज आपका एक इंस्टीट्यूट एक नई पहल लेके आए जो इस एन में इस नेशनल एजुकेशन पॉलिसी में राष्ट्रीय शिक्षा नीति में एक अहम पहल जो रहेगी अहम पहलू जो रहेगा अहम पहल आपके इंस्टीट्यूशन से आपके महाविद्यालय आपके कॉलेजेस से और आपसे हो सके तो यह सभी से विनंती रहेगी प्लीज बी स्टे कनेक्टेड विद द एम एम टी टी सी संत गाड़गे बाबा अमरावती यूनिवर्सिटी एंड इफ देर एनी काइंड ऑफ अकेडमिक इवेंट्स यू कैन शेयर शेयर ऑन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप इज ओपन व्हाट्सएप ग्रुप इज ओपन फॉर ऑल and that group will be stay can uh, stay at is it uh, is uh, at it at it is and i will request each and every one whatever may be the academic uh, program you will organize in your colleges please share on that so other uh, faculty fraternity other uh, members of other faculty and other research scholar and student will get benefit from that so i will not telling much more thing we will stop here and on behalf of malvi mission teacher training center sant galge baba amravati university and uh, university i once again extend my sincere gratitude to everyone for participating here and connecting with us and please stay, please be stay connected in near future thank you everyone thank you so much hello sir ha ah, yes gulane sir please ha ah, sir sabhi participant ki or se mai vote of thanks karna chahta hu zarur zarur please sir please ha ah. मानवी मिशन सेंटर संत गाड़गे बाबा अमरावती विद्यापीठ का जो यह बहुत बढ़िया ट्रेनिंग चला इसके कोऑर्डिनेटर श्री डॉक्टर श्री अतिक सर 
उनके प्रति मैं सभी पार्टिसिपेशन की ओर से आभार व्यक्त करना चाहता हूँ और साथ ही साथ बहुत सरलता से हमें जोड़ने का काम और यह सफलता पूर्वक कोर्स निभाने का काम श्री अंकुट अंकित ठाकुर सर ने किया आपके प्रति मैं सभी की ओर से धन्यवाद देना चाहता हूँ कृतज्ञता व्यक्त करना चाहता हूँ और यहाँ पे रुकता हूँ थैंक यू सर थैंक यू सो मच सर थैंक यू सो मच आपका तहे दिल से शुक्रगुजार रहेगा हम लोग और ऐसे ही स्टे कनेक्टेड रहिए प्लीज सभी का धन्यवाद